Okay, in this video, we are going to talk about the external features of the adult sporophyte of uh, or the plant body of the cycas. In the first video, I had already explained, we had discussed on the dis distribution as well as the occurrence. So, coming to the external features, the cycas plants, they are evergreen and slow-growing small trees. And these plants, they usually resemble the angiospermous palm trees, okay, in external appearance. As you can see in, in these uh, diagrams here, they are differentiated into leaves, stem and the roots, okay. So, they are differentiated into roots, stem and leaves and their average height is about 3 to 5 meters, okay, but... Uh, some species as we had already uh, seen in the previous video that they attain a height of about 13 to 20 meters or even more. These plants, they are long-lived with an average age of several hundred years. And the cycas plants, they usually grow wildly in xerophytic habitats, okay, where water is scarce, just like a... Uh, for example, the exposed slope of hills where water is scarce. So they grow in the xerophytic habitats. And each plant, as you can see here, it consists of an a thick unbranched columnar stem. So the, the stem is on branch and it bears a crown of pinnately compound leaves. Why pinnately compound? As you can see here, the, these foliage leaves the leaflets are present on both sides of the rachis okay as you can see here as well so the leaves are pinnately compound the leaflets are arranged in pairs in both sides of of this uh, rachis right of this rachis here and such a habit is referred to as arborescent right arborescent why because they resemble a tree in their growth in their appearance in their growth as well as appearance so coming to the external features of all the three let us talk about the root the stem and the leaf now here in this diagram okay this is the same all right it is differentiated into the roots you can see these are the roots the primary roots and these small root hairs are the secondary root then we have other type of roots known as the coralloid roots then this is the stem having the scars okay or the leaf bases we will talk about this in detail later on and this is the crown of foliage leaves and also there are some retained dead leaves here okay so this is the basal sucker or known as the bilbils so we will talk about all these features in detail. Now, here first let us talk about the coralloid roots. Okay, there are two types as I had mentioned. The normal tap roots in this figure you can see the primary and the secondary roots which is the normal tap roots and the second type of roots they are the coralloid roots. Now, uh, coming to the coralloid roots some of the lateral branches of the roots okay here actually what happened here these some of these lateral branches of the roots here you can see they grow agiotropically all right meaning they grow upward towards the surface of the soil all right bending up or away from the soil from the ground so they grow agiotropically towards the surface of the soil and these sorry these coralloid roots here what happened they uh, they get repeated dichotomously branched and they become coral like appearance so you can see that clearly in this figure Okay, you can see they are dividing, they are branch, dichotomously branch and 
also they have the coral like appearance that is why they are called as coralloid roots or coralor rhiza and the ultimate branches of these roots as you can see here clearly in this picture that they become short and thick and also they do not bear any root cap unlike the normal root the normal root at the apex they usually has root caps but these coralloid roots they do not bear any root caps and the cluster of these branches soon become they will become a uh, greenish brown in color why due to the entry of some blue green algae bacteria and fungi okay so these roots they possess microorganisms such as algae bacteria and fungi and there are several lenticle like appearance lenticel like apertures found on the surface of the roots okay even in this these black thing here in this figure they are actually the lenticel like apertures they are apertures which are found on the surface all over the surface of the roots and he, through these apertures these microorganisms will entry will enter okay so they will enter and get accumulate in the roots the blue green green algae bacteria as well as fungi so some of the cells of middle cortical region of these roots they will get disorganized leaving behind small and large spaces all right so the cortical region of the roots of these roots they will get disorganized and they will leave behind small and large spaces so it is in these spaces that are communicated with external air but through these apertures okay the lenticel like apertures all these apertures here that you can see and these spaces they will become invested by some nitrogen fixing uh, cyanobacteria then other bacteria algae diatoms and also some fungi so these microorganisms as i had mentioned they probably entered through the through these lenticel like apertures and investigations it ha have shown the presence of uh, some bo the blue green algae such as nostoc anabena and also bacteria such as bacillus azotobacter okay the the nitrogen fixing bacteria and certain diatoms as well as fungi are present inside these roots and recent investigators they have shown the initial entry of blue green algae is not responsible for the formation of these coralloid roots okay actually the formation of these roots these coralloid roots uh, it depends on the exposure to light and here what happened the low lights the low light it stimulates the apogeotropic growth growth of the roots all right so those normal tap root which are are present near the soil surface due to low light intensity they will start growing apogeotropically that is uh, away from the surface towards the surface of the soil okay and whereas the high light intensity it favors the formation of the nodules so later on the blue green algae they probably entered through the breaks in the root epidermis all right or through these lenticle lenticel apertures and following the entry of alga the host calls of algal zone it will secrete a large amount of mucus which will get deposited in the intercellular spaces in the roots in these roots and the cells of algal zone it will undergo somatic reduction of chromosomes resulting in the formation of small cells among the large diploid cells and these small cells they will secrete slime to provide pathway for the establishment of the colonies of blue green 
algae. And also recent findings it indicate that there is a symbiotic association between the algae and the, the blue green algae and the roots. Why symbiotic association? Why symbiotic relationship? Because the algae they usually supply fixed nitrogen to the roots, whereas the roots they will probably provide protection to the alga. So in this way they form a symbiotic relationship. And these coralloid roots, they are usually found in abundance in young plants and also in the cultivated plants grown in pots or tubs. So the next, that is the stem. Okay, just take a look at this figure here, a part of a major stem. Now, what do you see here? The stem of a young plant is short, tuberous and also subterranean. So, this subterranean, it usually occurs under and later on when the plant matures, the stem will become woody, erect, stout, columnar and also arborescent. That is just like uh, resembling the growth of a tree, right? Columnar, it resembles an upright pillar or a column. I had already shown to you in this diagram. So as you can take a look at the stem here. Okay, this is the stem. Now the stem, it is, it usually uh, remains unbranched. Okay, but occasionally small branches may be produced. And this plant, you can see it is a major plant. So it is woody erect columnar and arborescent and also it bears a crown of leaves okay you can see here that the three both these plants they bear a crown of leaves here on top and here what happen if the branching occurs in the stem the branching is if it occurs it is usually sympodial in male plants right here I'm showing you both the female and the male plants. The male plants bearing the cone, the male cone and the female plants here you can see they bear the megasporophylls on the apex of the stem. So here in the female plant usually if the branching occur it is usually monopodial. Alright, whereas in the male plants in the male plants here it is usually sympodial that is uh, we can see the branching occurs when the when the term it is a bifurcating branching pattern okay when the uh, stronger branches they becomes the primary shoot and the weaker branches they usually appear laterally that is sympodial branching whereas in female plants okay we have the monopodial branching where the terminal bud it continues to grow as the central leader shoot so usually the the stem it remains on branch but occasionally small branches may be formed so just remember that in if the branching occurs then in female plant it will be monopodial Whereas in male plant, it will be sympodial. And sometimes branching may also occur due to either injury or due to the growth of bulbils. We will talk about these bulbils later on. Now, what do you see here in the entire surface of the stem? So just take a look at this figure 2 here, this one. What do you see here in this entire uh, surface of the stem? It is covered with armor of leaf bases. Okay, there is leaf bases all over the entire surface of the stem. And these leaf bases, they persist for many years. What happened in male plants, you will see the difference is that the leaf bases, they are only of two types actually. Okay, there is the, the larger one, okay these are the you can see these are quite big these leaf bases here 
so and whereas there are also small leaf bases so the larger leaf bases they representing the leaf bases of foliage leaf and the small one they represent bases of scale leaves all right and also as you can see in this diagram that they alternate with each other in female plants actually the leaf bases there are three types the larger ones again representing uh, these larger ones they are of foliage leaf the small one here you can see they are of scaly leaf and the median one they representing those of megasporophylls okay when the megasporophylls they fall out they will also leave uh, leaf traces or leaf bases on the stem okay so in female there are usually three uh, types of bases all over the stem you can see in this diagram as well all right so in female you can see the larger one the smaller one actually and there is median one that it, all these leaf trays or leaf bases when the leaf fall out okay they become dried and they fall off from the tree from the trunk they will leave a trace on the stem okay so but in in male plants only two types are there the larger one that is when these foliage leaf they fall off they will leave larger leaf trace whereas the smaller one it indicates of those scaly leaf okay the leaf scars and the persistent woody leaf bases they actually protect the stem okay and it it, it or oh, it can also be used as an index of the age of the plant okay it is generally observed that the how the this older portion of the stem all right the basal portion of the old stem is comparatively thin and smooth whereas the upper portion is usually thick and rough why it is because the leaf base of the basal part of the stem they get disintegrated and easily fall off okay that is why the the basal portion of the stem of the old tree of the old plant cycas plant the basal portion is usually uh, thin and smooth okay because the leaves they usually fall off they get disintegrated and fall off quickly moreover the basal portion of the stem is more near the soil surface so that it remains in contact with runaway water as well as it remain contacts with the microorganisms which remain in the soil and the shoot apex of cycas as you can see it is protected by a russet of uh, brown scale leaves okay there uh, here I will show you later on the scale leaves. It has been shown that it has been shown that the shoot apex of cycas at the level of youngest leaf primordia is very large. It is approximately thirty three hundred micrometer in width. Okay, so let us talk about these scale leaves and the uh, also the foliage leaves now as you can see here in this third diagram here uh, in the first diagram here these are are the okay actually what do you see when you see a cycas plant you see the stem it bears at its at it, its apex a crown of spirally arranged leaves so the leaves as i had mentioned that they are dimorphic okay of two types the foliage and the scale leaves and they both the foliage and the scale leaves they are uh, produced in alternating horse so let us take about uh, talk about these foliage leaves you can see these foliage leaves the foliage leaves they are very large and they measure about uh, one to three meter Okay, they measure about 1 to 3 meters in size and they are pinnately compound. You can see the leaflets, they are arranged in pairs in both sides of the rachis. So they are pinnately compound consisting of many leaflets. You can see these, sorry, 
these are the leaflets here okay you can see many leaflets are present here so these leaflets are also known as the pinny they are arranged on both sides of the rachis and the number of leaflets present in a leaf it varies from species to species and also it depends on the age as well as the size of the individual plant so the young plant they actually produces single small leaf with just one or two pairs of foliage leaves all right that is the young plant whereas the number of leaves and number of leaflets in each leaf it increases as the plant matures so single leaf of an old plant it may have okay these leaflets may be about uh, 80 to 100 pairs okay of leaflets in Cycus sericinalis, whereas in Cycus romfa it is about 50 to 60 pairs, and in Cycus revoluta, it is you these leaf base uh, leaflets they are usually more than 100 pairs. And the old plant it produces a large number of foliage leaf in, a, in the form of a single crown. You can see here it, it is in the form of a single crown in both the female and the male plant all right and but sometimes uh, as i had already shown in that previous video some species they have two crowns also a foliage leaf okay so two crowns may be may also be produced annually in some species and uh, this person panned in the year 1953 he reported the production of two crowns per year in Cycus revoluta, Cycus seasonalis and Cycus romphi growing in Allahabad in India and one crown is produced in spring whereas the other during the monsoon season all right so some of the species here you can see they bear as you can see it has many crowns not only a single single crown of foliage leaf in case of cycus revoluta so this is just an example so next sorry uh, in young condition these foliage leaves they are serenely coiled okay just take a look at this picture here you can see in figure c what happened these uh, the the leaflets they are coiled okay the pinny or the leaflets they are coiled seriously and this character of cycus it shows resemblance with ferns okay the way these leaf you can see here the leaflets are open but here in this young leaves they are seriously coiled all right and that is why this is the one of the character of cycus which shows resemblance with ferns and the crown of young circinately coiled leaves grows very slow and emerges out pushing the scales aside so when they grow all right here in this diagram yes you can see here below these are the scaly leaves all right here below these are the scaly leaves and these are the foliage leaves so these are the young foliage leaves where the leaflets they are coiled certainly coiled but when they are open they will they are exposed they begin pushing out these scaly leaves aside all right so as soon as they are exposed they begin to open they begin to open out as in this case you can see the growth becomes more rapid and each leaf expands to its full size within few days and the young leaves okay in these young leaves these small young leaves they are also covered with ramenta or what are known as hairs okay so a fully expanded leaf is thick and leathery because of the presence of ramenta or the hairs and each leaflet of cycus it consists of three parts now again just take a look at this first figure here it consists of three parts why this one the midrib here is known as the racket uh, sorry the rachis rachis and also we have here the leaf base sorry this is the rachis 
then we have the leaf base and the leaflets on both sides and the leaf base is actually rhomboidal in shape okay so the base of the leaf is usually rhomboidal in shape and it attaches the leaf transversely to the stem all right it helps in the attachment to the stem the leaf base so next what we have here the rachis when we talk about this rachis that is this uh, midrib region okay the middle portion of the leaf this rachis is thick and also woody and whereas the petiole portion of the leaf in cycas revoluta cycas cisnalis it bears two short and stiff spines okay two rows of short and stiff spines near its base and in some uh, it has been reported that some cycas they have four rows of spines in some leaves okay here i'm not uh, it is not there i'm not showing the spines but just remember that some report they show the presence of spines in some leaves and the leaflets also they are thick and leathery let me show you here okay these leaflets also they are usually thick and leathery and also uh, elongate ovate or lanceolate in shape and also these leaves remember just like other leaves they are photosynthetic in function and they are usually sessile okay they are sessile that that is they are uh, directly connected to the rachis and they don't have uh, they have a narrow base and also decurrent margins these leaf they have decurrent margins and in some species the leaflet is entire the leaflet is entire and flat as you can see here in case of cycas pectinata and in all the cases each leaflet it will possess a single prominent midrib which gives no venation so i don't know if i can show you in this oh yes in this diagram you can see here can you see here these small spines in this case small spine is present in the leaves and also uh, let me show you in other pictures mm, okay you as you can see here the leaflets it's not so clear okay but just remember that the leaflets they also have only one midrib and there is no venation all right and in some species such as this cycas revoluta what happened uh, this midrib it actually projects beyond the apex okay ending in spine so it will look like spine and coming to the second type of the leaf that is the scaly leaf so let us talk about the small leaf here that is the scaly leaves unlike the foliage leaves the scaly leaves they are comparatively very small rough and very dry they are usually triangular in shape you can see here in this figure b this is a single scaly leaf they are usually brown in color triangular in shape and they are thickly coated with brown colored ramenta ramenta that is hairs and the scale leaves they also arise in close spirals you can see here in this picture below these scaly leaves they are also arise in close spirals and around the stem particularly covering the young shoot apex of the stem okay and not only covering the young shoot apex but they alternate with the whorl of foliage leaves so actually in the apex of the stem you will find these scaly leaves which alternate with these foliage leaves okay so on top of the the stem here all right so here just below here you will see the scaly leaves and here the foliage leaves all right so they these leaves 
also when they fall off they will leave a characteristic leaf bases or uh, what we do, what do we call leaf scars okay which will cover the surface of the stem so that is why in the stem you see the different leaf scars the big one caused by the foliage leaf <coughs> excuse me and the smaller one caused by the scaly leaves however this rhomboidal uh, leaf rhomboidal leaf bases of these leaves are smaller than those of the foliage leaf okay that is why the the scars or the leaf traces in the stem also is small and the main function of the scale leaf is to provide protection to the growing apex so in this diagram what is this actually it is a a picture showing a whole uh, bulbil structure so what are these bulbils these bulbils they are vegetative buds okay produced on the main stem and you can see they are very small and ovoid adventitious buds which usually come out at the basal portion of the trunk in the crevices of scale leaves now when when they get detached from the main stem, they will germinate to produce new plants and help in vegetative propagation. So when they fall off on the ground, the, the, the foliage leaves will start to form and they will start to grow forming the full tree, full plant. So they, these type of bulbils, they usually grow at the base. Right, as you can see in this figure, this is the whole cycus plan. So you can see what is this here is known as a basal sucker, or it it is known as the bulbil. They will grow at the base of the stem, and when they get detached, they will grow fully into a mature plant.